Is the Shroud of Turin really the burial cloth of Yeshua? Let's talk about it. Hey, this is Off the Cuff, and I'm Steve from TorahFamily.org. Scientists have debated back and forth on the Shroud of Turin for who knows how long. Many say how we don't have the ability to recreate such a piece today, so how can anyone have created it throughout any time in history? Therefore, it has to be the legitimate burial cloth of Yeshua. While the scientists continue their debate on the validity of the shroud, I'd like us to take a biblical look at it. If one is to believe the shroud is, in fact, the burial cloth of Yeshua, there are some things that have to be accepted. Going under the assumption there was indeed some kind of supernatural flash at Yeshua's resurrection to make the image, one has to believe the cloth was not fully wrapped around Yeshua. They would have to believe the cloth was stretched out, Yeshua then laid on it, and then the remainder of the cloth was simply folded back over Yeshua with the fold in the cloth above his head, as shown here in these images of it. The cloth would have had to simply be laying over Yeshua and under him to get these perfect images. It couldn't have been wrapped around him in any way. Otherwise, the image imprinted on the cloth would be distorted because of it being wrapped around his body. But the mere fact of seeing how there is a gap of the image in the middle of the cloth proves the cloth was definitely not wrapped around him. In fact, the implication of the imprinted image on the cloth implies the imprinted areas of the cloth, top and bottom, were the only parts of the cloth that were touching Yeshua's body. But the scriptures tell us that Joseph of Arimathea literally wrapped Yeshua's body with it. Seen here in Matthew 27, verse 59, Mark 15, verse 46, and John 19, verse 40. The word used for wrapped here in John 19 implies Joseph and Nicodemus literally bound Yeshua's body in the cloth. In fact, this exact same word is used just one chapter earlier here in chapter 18, verse 12, where it says they bound Yeshua when they arrested him. So, Joseph and Nicodemus didn't just lay the cloth over Yeshua. They bound Yeshua's body in it. It's impossible to have a perfect flat image of the body on a cloth when it was literally bound tight by that cloth. Would there be an image? Of course, but it would be distorted from every angle. It wouldn't be a perfect two-dimensional image as given on the Shroud of Turin. Look again at John chapter 19, verse 40. Notice how it says, in accordance with Jewish burial customs. Okay, so who else do we see was buried in accordance to the Jewish burial customs? Lazarus, as seen here in John chapter 11, verse 43 and verse 44. It says his hands and feet were wrapped. The word linen doesn't even exist here in the Greek. The word is actually plural for cloths. Thus, it's interpreted as strips of linen. Plus, someone else had to release him. The burial traditions wasn't just to lay the individual on the cloth and then fold the cloth back over by laying it back over the individual. They were literally wrapped and bound by the linen. Please also notice the facial cloth here. Where else do we see this? You guessed it, with Yeshua. Seen here in John chapter 20, verses 6 and 7. 
This shows even more clarification that the fascia cloth was one that surrounded his whole head, and it was separate from the strips that surrounded his body. It wasn't one huge piece of cloth as given with the Shroud of Turin. So what do we do with the verses that implies it was one single linen cloth instead of those that make it appear to be strips of linen? When looking at the English translations, there definitely appears to be contradictions. Luke 24.12 makes it appear as strips of linen. However, Matthew 27, 59 implies it to be a singular piece of cloth. So are these contradictions or are they translation errors? When searching it out, one will find it just says linen in the Greek. It doesn't have the singular cloth. Thus, it could still be linen strips. Strips of clean linen is still clean linen just the same. It's also seen here in Mark chapter 15, verse 43. It says Joseph bought linen. Again, cloth doesn't even exist in the Greek here. So, when we take the added word cloth from the translators out, it matches with the rest of Scripture. He bought linen, which he would have cut in accordance to the burial tradition. This is also seen here in Luke 23, 53. The word cloth doesn't exist in the Greek. When at the same time, we see that very linen cloth was cut into strips when looking at the account from the Gospel of John when we see Peter and John coming to the empty tomb. In fact, in this account, the word for linen doesn't exist either. Every time you see the word linen here, it's actually the word for cloth, and it's the plural version. So, it's literally cloths. Thus, the linen cloth that was purchased was cut into strips. If this wasn't enough to cause one to begin to doubt the shroud as the burial cloth of Yeshua, please consider the following prophecy from Isaiah. Isaiah 52, verse 13. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man and his form marred beyond human likeness. So Yeshua was so disfigured there was no recognizing him even as a man. Yet, looking at the shroud, you see an image of a man hardly scarred at all in comparison to Isaiah 52. A common rebuttal would be the image on the cloth is of his resurrected body and not that of his body from his suffering and death. However, if that was so, why do we see evidence of blood on his wounds at his feet, wrists, and head? The blood stains are obviously from when he was originally first covered by the cloth. But do we really think these were the only wounds Yeshua had? Were these really the only places he would have been bleeding? Pilate had Yeshua flogged. Yeshua was beat so bad, he wasn't even recognizable. The cloth would have been covered in blood. Even if one wants to say Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus cleaned Yeshua's body before placing the cloth over him, they would have only been able to clean where there was skin. After being flogged, whatever skin was still on Yeshua would have been so scarred and marred there would have been blood stains all over the cloth. There's also claims that the text Jesus and Nazarene, implying Jesus of Nazareth, are written on the shroud of Turin in Greek. But think about this for a moment. Mark chapter 15 verse 46 records that Joseph of Arimathea was the one who bought the linen. 
Scripture tells us he was a prominent member of the council. And we know Nicodemus was a Pharisee as well. Both of these men were the only ones who took Yeshua's body from the crucifixion site to the burial site. They were the only ones to prepare Yeshua's body for his actual burial, and Joseph was the one who bought the linen for the burial. So, from the crucifixion site to when the tomb was closed, these two Hebrew scholars were the only ones to touch or even be around Yeshua's body. Do we really think two Hebrew scholars would write Jesus of Nazareth in Greek on Yeshua's burial cloth? Hardly. All I'm saying here is there's way too much evidence in the scriptures that should cause all of us to think before blindly believing what scientists in the Catholic Church tells us regarding this cloth. If you wish to hold that the Shroud of Turin is Yeshua's burial cloth, well, that's your prerogative. But this is something we do not hold to. Well, that's all I have. Think about it. Pray about it. But more than anything, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Until next time, Shalom.